Welcome to the Couch Time Podcast, where we give you tools to connect with your kids and point them to Jesus. I'm Aaron. Uh, I'm Stephen Petrie. And I'm Josh Lewis. And parents, we want to remind you, Parent Equip Conference is this Saturday, October 10th, and we're trying to wrap up the in-person registration um, by end of day today. So if you are planning on being there in person, would you please sign up today? Uh, Go to graceky.org forward slash parent equip. Um, we're trying to get all the little details like food and things figured out. So if you could do that today, that'd be great. But obviously, if uh, you, you need to reach out to us later on, please do that. Register today. And if you're one of our viewers from another country and you're listening to this, <laughs> if you subscribe and like, we will pay for your plane ticket to come this weekend, October 10th to the Parent Equip Conference. That is going to come out of the independence budget. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if anybody, if anyone takes me up on it, I'll if do anybody it. Anybody <laughs> takes up on it, you know what? That'll be amazing. That would be super cool. Whoever's listening in Singapore. <laughs> so, yeah, we uh, another big shout out. We are sponsored this morning by uh, our friends over at Beans Cafe. We're having some <laughs> leftover pumpkin bread that is absolutely amazing. So thank you. <laughs> Delicious. It's fueling us this morning. All right. Well, we are going to talk this morning about a very. Uh, you know, just a very, I would say, prevalent topic amongst youth pastors and youth ministries. We're going to talk about drama. So drama is this, this, it's this beastly, mysterious, vague, hard to pinpoint thing, and it's unmistakable. So when there's drama happening, people can see it, they sense it, they feel it. Parents, they pick up on it with their kids. Um, so in this in this episode, we're going to try to define it. We're going to try to boil it down as far as what's the root, the heart of the of the topic of drama, and then what are some tactics and things that you know families, parents could do to encourage their kids to point them to Christ and to attack the root, the problem of drama, and not uh, stay caught up in it. It's it's kind of unavoidable, but we're going to try to boil it down. So, right off the bat, Josh, Stephen. We could <laughs> we could talk about all kinds of examples of drama, even even in our own personal lives. Um, I almost couldn't see straight last week because of so many dramatic situations in ministry that mm. I was trying to see through, and I couldn't. So it's it's personal, but also mm. in ministry we could have examples with students. But how would you define if you could if you could define it impromptu? What define words? Drama? Yes. What words would you use to define drama? I think. Drama is when personal hurt gets like um, brought into like group environments. So like mm-hmm. someone's like upset at somebody, and rather than like dealing with it and working through it, talking through it, um, you bring other people in in order to make yourself feel better and that person look worse. Mm-hmm. So then people like start kind of. It's about choosing sides, picking themes, and like it makes it you feel better about yourself because you're talking about it and sharing. About so it. intrinsic mm. to drama is opposing sides. Mm. Sure. I would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, w- I think, I think I would agree. Yeah. Um, I don't have as well thought out of a definition, but some words that come to my mind are like, you know, uh, an angsty fog. So like, there's mm. like that a lot of times with drama there's like this angst around it but it's foggy because like why like why are we talking about this or like especially if you're the parent or the student ministry person or whatever it's like why I feel like we're talking about this but that's not the problem and but like uh, I think a lot of times um a little bit like what you were saying Stephen like it's almost like this unnecessary making a big deal out of situation where you're trying to get some sort of attention, whether you're trying to uh, put somebody else down because you want to look good or, yeah, like a lot of times there's that just like gossip, slander. It's kind of like all those things like combined into mm. drama. Yeah. So I'm going to give two definitions, and I think it will shed light on – why this is such an important issue that we should be talking about kind of regularly because it's 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 gonna happen sure um but i'll give the definitions and then we'll talk some more about it the first 
the first definition is this. Any situation or series of events having vivid, emotional, conflicting, or striking interest or results. Hmm. It's kind of a, a mouthful. Makes sense. Second definition is this, and this one seems to fit a little bit It's more specifically to relational drama. Hmm. A situation or sequence of events that has a highly that is highly emotional, tragic, or turbulent. Mm. And mm. if you think about it like that, which that's the definition in my head that made the most sense, there are all kinds of things that cause people to have turbulence in their life, which is bumpy. You know, things aren't going exactly how they want. It's not smooth. Whatever those things are, they might not be the same for me. So mm-hmm. drama happens because somebody's experiencing some sort of turbulence, mm-hmm. and then that affects other people around them either by uh, immaturity. People are talking about people are choosing sides or making fun or they're taking that out to, you know, to be mean or something like that. Uh, or us when people come to me and they're talking about this drama that's happening and I'm – why are we talking about this? This is so stupid. That's not. That's really not what the problem is. Yeah. The problem's over here. It's uh, it's all relative as far as what makes somebody uh, emotional mm-hmm. or what is tragic in somebody's life. That's a perspective thing that is not shared from student to student. Mm-hmm. That's um, true. And turbulence is felt by some people. Some people have different situations are bothered by certain types of you know, angst or whatever, and other people handle it well. So it's it's all relative, which is why drama is so difficult to pinpoint and mm. nail down because mm. when drama builds, like you're saying, Stephen, at least from my perspective in student ministry, as soon as more than two people are involved, it it's morphing and shifting and changing just constantly. And so as far as what is this, how do we deal with this? Let's stop this and put this to an end, whatever it is. It's really, really hard to catch and get um and kill it it's like mentos and diet coke (laughs) wow (laughs) that's a very vivid picture (laughs) so i want to talk specifically about what the bible says about drama and if you guys were to do just a search on drama there's a whole bunch of verses that aren't like what does it mean there's nothing the bible doesn't say drama but i believe that there's a passage of scripture in galatians chapter 5 that defines it perfectly um So we're not going to read the whole thing, but Galatians 5 is the passage that talks about the fruit of the Spirit, and a lot of people know that. So Stephen and Josh, I have a question. Based on your definition that you gave beforehand and then even the one that we just used, Mm -hmm. how important would you say the fruit of the Spirit is in a Christian's life as it relates to drama? Yeah, I mean, like, so the fruit of the Spirit is— the list is a result of the spirit working in you. So if the spirit is working in you, these things will be produced and there will be less drama. Um, or you will be a person of peace in the situation. Um, I think the lack of, uh, you know, you, you you either rejecting the Spirit's work in your life or, like, maybe you're not a believer at all. Like, looking at the list before, it's like, man, there's a whole lot of things. Like, I, I just wrote down, you know, it, it it talks about, like, hatred, strife, jealousy, all, all these different things. It's almost like you don't know how to deal with your emotions or what you're feeling or hurts that have been done to you. And so, like, if you don't have the spirit working in you, you're not going to know how to deal with these things. Mm -hmm. And so you will have hatred, strife, jealousy, all these different things. So that's what I'd say. Yeah. I, the other day was reading in first Corinthians. So first Corinthians 13 came to mind. It Mm -hmm. says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And drama is the exact opposite of all of that. I mean, as you describe it, it's like that is, that's not drama, any of those things. It's like drama comes when you're easily irritable. Drama comes when you're rejoicing at someone else's wrongdoing and you're making much of it and you're spreading it around. It doesn't want the truth. It doesn't rejoice in truth. It it doesn't bear someone else's sins or overlook someone's wrongs. Mm. It brings them up and magnifies them. 
and tries to lower your own and, and become arrogant and act like you're perfect. Um, it's not patient with people. Um, so I think like the spirit and growing in love for Christ um, is the way of like counteracting drama because you're going to be less likely to want to rejoice in wrongdoings and because you see it for what it is, it's sin. Mm -hmm. And you see people's brokenness and you see your own brokenness. So it's yeah. like drama becomes sickening rather than like, uh, pleasurable enticing, and, and enticing. Yes. Like we still fall into it or something, but like, I feel like the more I've grown recently, like the more like hearing people gossip or like, even if I say something gossipy, it's like, it just is like, Oh, this just stinks. Yes. Like, why are we talking like this? Like, right. and that's only just from like, I think growing in faith and growing yeah. in Christ that that begins to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. And for me, looking back at my own life, um, I remember when I got saved and then the transition of what I found funny and mm -hmm. entertaining in mm -hmm. TV or even like I would witness drama happening or something and it would be entertaining to mm -hmm. me. And I remember over the it, and it took years. It wasn't like mm -hmm. it just happened. But there's things that break my heart now when I witness because I see people who are unhappy. I mm -hmm. see people who are broken. I see people who are struggling and who are desperate for a solution and they. They don't have it, and yeah. it's like that breaks my heart. So it's I think you're exactly I right, Stephen. It's a perspective thing. I think a lot of times it's when I look at drama, I just like see people like seeking affirmation, like just yeah. seeking like mm -hmm. yeah, seeking affirmation. And there's certain there's certain students that I know and people that I know that are more prone to drama and gossip, and it's like you can just like they'll even come to us like with drama as if like we're gonna like just encourage it or it like right. be like oh really they did that to you how yeah. dare they but right. it's like dude do you hear yourself like right. take some responsibility like take yeah. like go work through this like you're not helping anything but i think it's just this they it makes you feel good to have other people like affirming mm -hmm. why you're upset yes. or affirming that you didn't actually do something as wrong as they did and putting yeah. other people down exactly so i want to talk about a little bit in biblical terms mm -hmm. which so I would highly encourage parents to go read this scripture and encourage your kids to read this scripture. But even just the more we can biblically think and use the terms that the Bible talks about them and apply them to life, I think the the more um, the more wise we will be able to be in helping solve problems and point people to truth and encourage um, you know God's glory in people's lives and in their hearts and in their minds as yeah. they're experiencing drama. And so. What I mean by that in the context of this is the Bible uses, you know, the the phrases, the flesh and the spirit. So the mm -hmm. fruit of the spirit is this. Well, the fruit of the flesh is this. So there's these opposing things, the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the flesh. The flesh and the spirit are yeah. against each other. They are opposite. And you see this all over scripture. So like in Colossians and in Ephesians where it talks about putting off the old man and yep. putting on the new man. It's like that's put off the flesh and yep. put on the spirit. It's like that's the determining uh, the determination of both different opposing sides. And in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit, if you've never understood this before, um, it's written in the context of loving other people. So mm. 1 Corinthians 13, Stephen, is excellent that you brought that up because that is what it looks like to love other people. Mm -hmm. The fruit of the Spirit will enable you to love other people and do those things. Yeah, I was gonna say, right. the, the 1 Corinthians 13, I mean, it's really like 11, 12, 13 is yeah. all talking about like, the gifts of the spirit right. and then going into like love is like the most like yes. to be desired of all those. And yeah. this is what it looks yeah. like when you're full of the Holy spirit. Like yeah. this is so, what the gifts of the spirit look like. Exactly. So it says, and I'm going to read, you know, the bookends of this passage, Galatians chapter five, 13 to 26. I'm going to read the first couple of verses and then the last two, and then parents should go read it. But it says, if for you were called to freedom brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. A.K.A. drama. And then it goes in to list the fruit of the flesh mm. and the fruit of the spirit, right? So it's right in the context of loving and serving other people. And so yeah. the end of it, it says, if we live by the spirit, let us also keep in step with the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. And I think those two things give insight as into what's at the heart of drama. 
Mm-hmm. And I would encourage parents to, when drama happens, because it's going to happen. We live in a broken world. It's going to happen. Whether it's your kid causing it or they get roped into some other situation. He said, she said, boyfriend, girlfriend, who knows what? Somebody's feelings are going to get hurt. How do they see through this? Right. It starts with personal perspective mm-hmm. and seeing the flesh versus the spirit yeah. and asking the question of, you know, what is your motivation in this situation? Mm-hmm. Feeding the flesh or feeding the spirit? Are you in for what you're going to get out of this, or are you trying to serve other people in this, I think is at the heart of it. Does Mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So a couple questions now to kind of bring this all to a close, and we can can unpack it a little bit more. There's some other scripture that I want to reference. Are there any questions that come to mind for you guys? I've got a couple. Any questions that come to mind that are basic, solid questions that parents can ask their kids when drama is up that will get at the heart of drama? Hmm. I think, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is, like, if someone comes to me, like, complaining about someone who did something to them, the question you'd ask me, like, man, that's really hard. Like, how would Jesus respond to that person? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, like, it's cliche or whatever, but it it causes them to think, probably not how I'm responding right now. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> sure. it's like, oh, okay, like. Well, Jesus flipped tables, so I can flip tables. Yeah, like, would you, right like, would Jesus go, Let's like, just that. carry that over them? And, like, would yeah. you just go, like, spread that around? Would yeah. you just go, like, yeah. act like it, like, glorify in it and just be like, look what this person did to me, blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah, blah. It's like, no, like, well, that's kind of what you're doing right now, homie. Like, yeah. you, like, need to show, like, a little bit of humbleness. Hold that. Take it upon yourself offer grace and then if it really really caused you hurt take that hurt to christ you don't have Mm -hmm. to take that like hurt back and hold it Boom! gospel conversation right Um, there yeah Yeah. and that's that's a conversation but so how i guess like hear them out let them like share what's hurting and then stop and be like okay well what would be the right way to respond like Mm -hmm. how how what what is the way that honors christ in this um and hopefully they can begin to put together the pieces in their own mind that like it's not how they're Mm -hmm. responding whether or not they say it yeah, that that was like the first question that came to my mind as well. Uh, the uh, a follow up to like kind of dig in a little bit more could be just like, um, you know, f- figuring out like, can can we just stop and like pray for that person? Like, what do what what? How can we pray good things for this person? Not help them to stop doing this, but like, w- what are blessings that you can pray for that person? Like, Lord. It seems like so and so just really needs your peace, or really needs uh, your protection or provision, or just whatever mm-hmm. it is. Just like praying for the person instead of just like perpetuating the drama. Oh, man. Like, yeah. man, uh, it, it's <laughs> it's weird how praying for somebody that you're upset with can change your heart. I mean, my flesh. When I'm in a dramatic situation, the last thing I want to do is pray for that person. Totally. I just want to run through in my head all of the negative thoughts, all of the things that they've done wrong, all the ways that I think that I'm right. It's like that's where it comes down to the flesh versus the spirit. And so encouraging your kids to cultivate how can we feed the spirit right now in us? How can we think thoughts that glorify God right now, not things that feed our flesh mm-hmm. yeah. and sin? Yes, um, And not pray just like pity over them but also like remember like hey like (laughs) you need like you are just as broken as they are yeah so maybe because like maybe even like uh, also not just praying for them but maybe like confessing to the lord like where you've messed up because i've I've also seen people be like well steven said he probably acted this way because he (laughs) is lonely and doesn't have any friends it's like then you can just go drown it's like yes "Yes, lord i please pray like he probably has no friends and he's just so mean to be it's like no no no. no. like look and like see like no you're actually praying these things because you also feel these ways and you also experience these things maybe you just didn't lash out in the way that they did exactly so two questions that i think are great that i remember you know, my youth pastors doing and, and asking some form of this, my parents even asking, and ones that I've used that are super good at doing what you guys are saying, which is getting at the heart and trying to get your students. And even for myself, I have to ask this. It's like, oh, what? So the two questions are, what is the most kind and loving thing you could do for others involved? Mm. Like, ooh, okay. That forces me to think and detach my emotions and to then think about them and their emotions and where they're at and their perspective instead of just my own. And it's an action. The second question is, how can you be part of the solution and not make things worse? 
that's another provoking question because it's like, okay, all of the things that you feel like you want to do and you feel like you want to say and you naturally are thinking, yeah. do those help the problem or do they make it worse? Like get the kids to try to think what role are they playing in the drama? I think those two questions are, are good because they also – it doesn't – it also can be questions you could ask someone who's not directly involved in the drama, but totally. they're just about witnessing it. About it, it they're friends mm-hmm. of so and so. It's like those are still great questions. What is the most kind and loving thing I could do? Yep. Is it keep it talking to us? Is mm-hmm. it encourage my friend when he ever he shares it? Yes. Um, yeah. Is it like how can I be? That's, that's really good. And it's it's drama is so dangerous because it spreads so much, especially when people are talking about it. People on the fringes hear about it, and then rumors get started, and the game of telephone starts, and it's like hold on, hold on. You're witnessing this. You're hearing about what is the most loving thing you could do. Yeah, it might be to just keep your mouth shut and yeah. pray for everybody. You don't yep. even you don't need to know. Mm-hmm. But then again, it comes back to, but in my flesh, I want to be in the know. I yep. want to know the dirt. I want to be able to spill the tea with my friends yep. and be able to talk about. It. It's like nope. You just have to try to remember that it's uh, it's feeding the flesh. Totally. Um, Facts. So, the other, the other illustration that I would encourage your parents to go look up and use if you know this is a great tool for you to connect with your kids and point them to Christ the three circle diagram we taught on in a series um last September back to the start baby boom. that's when that's independence right. started yeah that's right yeah that was right that was a first series. that's awesome and so the three circles diagram there's a video that we'll attach that kind of walks through it but it's essentially how to share the gospel you know it's super easy but it also gives a perfect glimpse into brokenness Mm -hmm. and where brokenness falls in the gospel conversation and use that with your kids to either share the gospel with them if they don't know it themselves if they're not a christian it's like you can't tell them to care about the spirit more than the flesh if they don't know christ use it to share the gospel with them but if they know christ and profess him then use it to remind them about how jesus can affect brokenness now in their life how they can see brokenness in a christ honoring way so that's it's really hard and it's messy and we live in a broken world. Mm-hmm. And so it's gonna it's an uphill battle. We are canoeing upstream against the current. Like this is hard work. It's so I hope these tools are, are helpful. Go read Galatians five and six, Romans eight, and the entire book of Proverbs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, the entire book. <laughs> I mean, really, it yeah. talks about fools and wisdom. But again, if you remember the the biblical framework of flesh versus spirit, flesh yep. versus spirit, flesh versus spirit, like that is the war that's happening. And what is forefront? So I'll 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 end with the story. Um, I'll talk about the book, The Hobbit, and I said the book, not the movies, because the movies were, in my opinion, terrible representation of the book. But there's a dragon, yes. an epic dragon. Have you do you know that story, Stephen? There's an epic dragon, and there's only one way to kill the dragon. He's missing one scale, and he like that's the only way to penetrate and kill this dragon is you shoot and hit the heart. Mm-hmm. If you shoot, it just makes the dragon more angry yep. and he gets more furious and, destroys and more, more destructive yep. and it's like you have to hit the heart of the matter if you want to kill drama that's mm-hmm. so i would just encourage you to remember drama is very dangerous and destructive get to the heart yep get to the heart so don't forget the parent equip conference parent equip conference Sign this up. saturday Sign up. bye